everybody. Today we're going to be grooming an old dog. This is Sasha. She's almost 14 years old. She'll be 14 next month. And unlike Taya, she isn't very patient because she's an old dog. And today I'm going to be teaching you little secrets on when you're grooming your dog that's old what you should do. Mainly the real thing that you need to worry about is knowing when they need a break because too much stress on them can cause them to have issues whenever you groom them. So we're going to get started. Unlike Taya, Sasha gets a different cut. She gets a half inch cut just because shit zoos in general look better with a puppy cut than they do um, extremely short hair. Because with extremely short hair, it does not make them look good. It kind of makes them look more on the lines of a pig or an animal that's closer to a pug or otherwise. And it just doesn't look good for their breed. So, make sure you take the collar off, like I said in the last video with grooming, because if you take this to your collar, um, chances are you're going to cut it off. I did that once with one of mine. I'll never do it again, because I had to buy another one. I'm cheap. <laughs> then you just do the back, just like you do, or just like I did with, um, with Taya. You just kind of do as well. Like I said, um, straight-haired dogs, they're harder to groom than, um, say, poodles with curly hair and such like that because you have to be more precise with um, straight-haired dogs. Otherwise, it will turn out choppy. Like I said with the last video, for those who haven't watched, when it comes to big mats that you can't get out with your clippers by clipping it, you know, the way it's supposed to be clipped, you need to cut them out. Because brushing them out really does not do a bit of good. Unless your dog is an extreme shedder. Um, then it can work rather nicely, like with a cat, um, how they shed. It's easier to get their mats out because most of their hair just falls out when you lightly tug on it with a brush or your hands even, which make it kind of nice. Also for older dogs, Make sure that you're extremely careful when you give them a haircut because a lot of times the older your dog gets, the more lumpy they get. And when I mean lumpy, I mean moles and other little lumps like that. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have cancer unless it's a young dog, in which case you might want to take them to a vet to get diagnosed to see if that's what's causing the lumps. Um, other breeds are just lumpy all over. And Sasha does have her all her nails. So <clears throat> since she has all her nails, you have to be a little careful when you do the paws. Sasha's also overweight and kind of short. Uh, it makes it more difficult to get to her stomach when it comes to the grooming aspect of it. All right, we're back. Now, see that? That's a mole. Those are things I need to watch out for. Also, little lumps like this. Can't really see it very well, but this right here, that's a lump. You'll be able to feel these in the skin, and you're gonna wanna avoid them. Because if you accidentally hit this with a clipper, it's going to bleed, and it's going to hurt, and your dog's going to remember that. 
Another thing you need to watch out, especially for older dogs, right there. Their butt and sometimes their back, lower end, like right here. Um, after they start getting old, that starts to really hurt them, especially when you're grooming. And I will show you what to do when it comes to actually their face. Because Sasha here, she's, um, she's a very, very bad struggler when it comes to doing their face. So I'll give you some good tips on how to keep their head from moving and bobbing when you have a scissor near their eyes. Okay, we're back. Now, with older dogs especially, or dogs that tug, like I said, most most dogs actually do tug. Um, Tay is just a rare one that doesn't, and she's very good at grooming. But most dogs, young, old, baby, you need to hold them firmly on their chin. The hairs on their chin. Not the actual chin, the hairs on their chin. Especially when going around the eyes. Because this normally stops them from doing that. And when they do tug, you can feel it in your hand. Because they almost get, somehow you can tell that they're getting tense. So you can tell that they're going to, they're going to tug. Yeah. See, you can see how she's trying to tug. But since I have her firmly, firmly with my hand, she can't really move that well. And you can see that she's licking when she does. That's a calming mechanism. It shows that she does not like what I'm doing. Now when it comes to their lips, even though I'm, I've been doing this for a while, I don't like to get too, too close. I like to get as much as I can, but I don't want to get shorter than one fourth of an inch. That is the mark on anything. Whether the dog is flat faced, long faced, short haired, or long haired. Whenever you're grooming and cutting your dog, I would never go shorter than a fourth of an inch on their face, especially because when you're doing their eyes, your no their nose or even their mouths. Um, if you go shorter than that, since there's so many curves and different things in their face, you have a very high chance on cutting them, which is not a good thing. Because if you do cut them, um, it's very hard to get them back in the swing of just relaxation, or at least calmness because they get to the point where they think after you've done it that you're gonna do it again. Alright, you see how her ears, how the inside of it is all covered in here? That all needs to go too. The same with any dog that you groom. The inside of the ears, I rarely ever have to do this to Taya, but with Sasha, for some reason, she gets a lot more hair in her ears. The hair in her ears, if I can, all right, you see the this right here that's right next to my thumb? See how it's darker than the other colors of her ear? And even inside the ear? That's wax. When wax gets on the hair, it plugs up their ears. And if they plug up the ears, 
they have a high chance I'm getting an ear infection. And when the dog gets an ear infection, it's gross, it's icky, you never want to have to clean their ears. So check your dog's ears, especially when you're grooming them, or even when you're not grooming them. Most, uh, most vets will actually take baby powder, or not vets, um, groomers. Most groomers will actually put baby powder on this hair to make it so it doesn't slip, it's not slippery. And then they'll actually take a tweezer and they'll rip it out. Which I'll show you how to do it. It doesn't really make the dog feel great, but you cannot put a scissor in the dog's ear. Because if you put a scissor in the dog's ear, not only do you have a chance on seriously injuring the ear on the around the skin, as well as the the uh, inside of the ear, you can also damage that because when the dog shakes and and moves their head, which they will, there's no doubt about it, they will definitely move their head when you get anywhere near right in this section. Once you start hitting this section, they'll start tugging and pulling and there is no way on earth you can get a a uh, <clears throat> scissor in there safely. Alright, now I just get any kind of baby powder at all works. Sasha, yeah you know what's coming. I'm gonna have to go get you back here. So we're gonna pause this for a second. Alright, so this is what we do. See the dog? See the ear? Take a little bit of baby powder and you just oh, I'm gonna put her right here so that you can see. Put it in the ear, just like that. See how there's a lot of it in there? I like to kind of mix it up a little bit in there. I like to take a tweezer. And what you do is grab the hair and you pull. As you can see, she doesn't mind it too much. But either way, it kind of makes you feel bad. Because I'm sure it doesn't feel good. Feels good afterwards, but I'm sure it doesn't feel great during the process. And you just rip it out. We're back. Now, I'm going to have her lay down. See this? This is just regular dog ear cleaner. Technically, it's animal ear cleaner. And you can get this at your vet. I think sometimes they sell it at pet stores, but it's a lot more rare. Even though it's not really prescriptive, um, it's better to get it at a vet anyways. And then you just take this, tilt the dog's ear back. Make sure you get it enough in there, just like that. Kind of smush it around, just like that. Let them shake. And then just take a cotton ball, never a Q-tip, never a Q-tip. Never want to go inside the dog's ear. You can see how we're getting a bunch of wax out? Loads of fun. And you just continue doing this till when you take the cotton ball out, it's clean. Just kind of twist it in there, just like that. See how it's still dirty? So 
So then you take another one. And then, once you've started seeing that most of it's gone, when you twist it, you just kind of want to rub up against the ear just a little bit in each direction, kind of getting into the little crevices. Um, wax that's in there, you don't need to worry about it. Because if you continue doing the um, ear wash uh, about two times a day or so, that will all clear out. Or if you just leave it there, um, it should eventually clear out. And you just do the other th side and then you're good. I will show you what her paws look like when I start grooming them. But right now I'm going to do the other side. Say bye for now, Sasha. Just as a comparison, we're going to look at her ear. And now we're going to look at her other ear. See the difference? Big difference. Alright, we'll be right back. We're back. Sasha's back and face. Ears are done. Now, the really fun part, the feet. As you can see, we have a while to go. So, first off, I'm going to cut her nails. Standard dog clipper. You want to be very careful with these. Because it's not fun clipping the dog's nails too short. Because even though it doesn't really hurt them, it does startle them greatly. And last thing you want is an old dog being startled. Sometimes though, as much as it sounds bad, you need to cut the wick. Because sometimes if your dog's nail gets really, really long and kind of starts to curve like, um, there was one nail here that was really badly curved. Because my aunt doesn't necessarily hear her nails clip on, or technically clank on the, um, on the floor. So they get really overgrown. Quick's almost done bleeding. But this nail right here is what I'm talking about. They will literally, the nails will grow. Oop. Come on, Sasha, let me see your foot. The nails will grow so that they actually start to curve underneath the paw. That's the nail. See how it's starting to curve? When she walks, you'll end up hearing clank, 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 because she's actually walking on her toenails, which is not fun. And so, um, since it's really long, unfortunately, see that little pink right there? That's the quick. But if I don't cut it so that it's like right to here, all you'll hear is clank, 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 and that's because they're walking on their nails, which does not feel good. So we're gonna have to cut that. Some dogs, like Jazz and Sasha, have a fifth nail, which is kind of like a, a bear claw, or kind of like our kind of thumb, only it's not a thumb. And you can see here the 
four regular nails that you'll find on any standard dog. Any standard dog, you'll find these four nails. Yeah, that one's white, it's right here. But right below the paw, right here, you'll find on the side a nail which can be white, can be black, can be white and black, such and such. You'll be able to find it. Alright, you see how it looks? That means I'm getting close to the wick. And it starts turning a white, but with a little, almost like a pinky spot. And as you can see, fortunately enough with her nail, I can show you, this is how far it normally can be from the wick when you start seeing that. Alright, we're back. I did her paws, which you can't see very well because it's kind of being blocked by her tummy hair. And so we're going to be grooming her tummy real quick. And I was going to show you what to watch out for, because I don't remember if I did that in the other video. It only took me half an hour to brush out her tail, which was very matted. And so now we're just going to do her belly. And then we're just going to give her a shower, suds her up a bit, and then she should be all good. Most dogs prefer a shower over most other ways to give baths just because it's kind of like warm rain on them. So if you end up putting them in a bathtub and you ended up filling that up with water and you can't get the dog to sit still, try dumping out the water and having it just be a shower. A lot of times when you put it like lukewarm to more warm, um, they actually enjoy that much more. Why? I don't know. But a lot of people and animals prefer it. So we're going to quick turn Sasha onto her side because since she is fat, most dogs that are overweight, you need to actually put them on their side to groom their belly, especially ones that have short legs like this. Because if you can't get under their belly, it's best not to roll them on their back because the fat that they have on their body can sometimes make it very uncomfortable to breathe because the fat ends up squishing their organs and other things like that which kind of make it a little uncomfortable. My other camera ended up going dead and the memory was full on it and so I had to switch out cameras. To sum up what I did just in case nobody was able to see it because the camera died. Um, when doing your dog, when grooming your dog that's fat, any dog, doesn't matter the age, it's better to have them on their side because that's when they're the most comfortable. <sighs> Watch out for moles and their little boobs. If female, um, though males do have itty bitty ones that are like really tiny, much tinier than females. Um, watch out for those, um, groom on their side, make sure that when your dog is fat that you have um, your dog completely flat so that their skin all stretches out so that when you <coughs> redo their, um, their cut to make sure that it's completely straight, all the folds in the dog's, um, yeah, let me raise this up a bit. Okay, make sure that all the folds are completely straight out instead of like this, because if you have it where the skin isn't laying flat and you redo the thing just to make sure you got everything, um, you will miss a lot of stuff and it will look kind of tacky. So we're just going to finish that up and then we got to finish um, her bottom and that is the last thing on where we left off. Yeah. 
Alright. Now we just open her legs just like this. that out of the way. Spread that all apart. This part is kind of gross because the fur gets sticky here. Once again, watch for moles because moles, lumps, bumps can happen literally anywhere on the dog. Fortunately enough for Sasha, she doesn't have any in these areas. Sasha, you're okay. There's a lot of action going on, so it's kind of making her a little, little on at ease. And then you just Finish cutting up the sides here like so. And just keep doing this. Like I said in the last video with Taya. Right around this area is another jump start area, as I like to call it, where most animals don't like to be groomed there. There we go. Finish grooming the paw, which would be a lot easier if you were on your other side, like this. because I needed to finish grooming this area because I wanted to brush out her tail first because it kept getting in the way. And there's no moles here. Though it also helps when you've groomed the dog so many times you kind of you kind of know where their moles are. I just can't always find them right away. But I always get a an idea on where they're located. Now, I have to finish up the side of her butt, so we're going to have her stand, and just because she has a hard time standing, because she's fat, I just like to put my foot underneath her, so that if she does have a need to sit down, um, she can lay on my leg, so that I can still reach the spots that I need to reach. Otherwise, it gets a little too hard trying to constantly, um, constantly do this with her sitting down. As you can see, there's a few hairs there. Got. 
finish doing this side, which now she can lay and I can see. Because it's practically all cut now. Since this is kind of long here, I'll give a little cut with the scissors. Under the belly doesn't need to be perfect, but it's nice so that next time when you do this, everything's close to the same length. to do now is give her a shower, brush out her tail again after drying her off, and voila! You got a clean fuzzball. I hope you enjoyed this video!